We're here with Robert Fishko, Forum Gallery. Well-crafted work of a variety of formats. We're more of a figurative art gallery. Uh, we show art of the human spirit. And as far as it's being well-crafted, we kind of take that almost for granted because uh, we're uh, really well-established. We've been in business for 50 years. Gallery in New York City, and in order to do that, we feel like we're playing in the major leagues and everybody has to be able to execute their ideas. It's what you can do beyond that, what you can think of, what contribution you can make, how you can expand people's horizons, and how you can give them an experience that adds to their life and enriches it that separates the good from the great from the super great. And ultimately it's the test of time and you do have work that spans different eras as well as contemporary works. We do. Uh, we show everything from 1900 until the day before yesterday. By doing that we tried to show how there is a history to every part of art and uh, by showing the works that can be said to inspire the artists who are working today that we represent, we feel as if we put everything in context and make it uh, apparent to the people who see it. So, so the flow of history becomes accessible in that way? We hope so, yes. <laughs> well, we've been, we've been enjoying your gallery at various expos. How do you feel that, that the art fairs have changed the market, the, the opportunity to present works to new audiences? Well, today in 2015, with the profusion of internet and electronic media, uh, people spend a lot of time looking at images of works, but they don't have the same kind of opportunity to see the actual work of art itself. And we think that art fairs are a fantastic way that people can experience the communication that the unique object has with the viewer and they can see a pre-selected exhibition of the very best works of art that are for sale in the world under one roof and maybe they can spend four or five hours and really get a sense of what appeals to them, what speaks to them, what enriches their lives, what they'd like to have in their homes and in order to do that without an art fair they would be needing to spend and invest tremendous amounts of time and money to travel and then dig around for what they're looking for. There are 600 galleries in New York. So, yeah. I think I can't follow that up with anything better. Seeing actual work in person, nothing in the digital realm will replace that, so it's arguably more important now than ever before. Cheryl Fishko, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you. We just had a brief opportunity to have a chat with your husband who shared his philosophies about art fairs and forum galleries' role in the arts. How do you feel? I think that there's a lot of information that we pass on when we have these art fairs. We educate people on a daily basis. You get to talk about an Andrew Wyeth or a Thomas Hart Benton or a Man Ray painting and then why it's important. You're imparting some sort of information that makes the viewing audience more intelligent than they were when they walked in the door. And I feel that that's kind of part of why we're here. It advertises what we have. It advertises our contemporary roster. We get to talk about what we're doing in the season with people. And if you look at the numbers of what it costs to do this and what it costs to advertise and print, yeah. you know, you're looking at equal dollars sometimes. You know, it's not the New York Times is nothing to sneeze at or Art Forum is nothing to sneeze at, but there's nothing better than getting to talk to the dealer. I agree, and there's nothing that replaces seeing actual art in person. We are strong advocates of the art fair model only because we feel that it's an opportunity to share works with people that might not go into a gallery. Right. I mean, we see more people here in these four days that we've been here than we'll see in a whole year inside the gallery. And what you'll do is you'll get someone to be encouraged to come and see you when they come to New York right. the next time. Right. Your gallery itself has, has managed to maintain a really strong niche of, of a very strong work with a certain continuity. Do you and Robert share the same aesthetic? Do you argue? Um, we do argue. 
but um, y- you pick and choose your battles very carefully. And ultimately, this is his family's business, and I'm very respectful always of that. Um, but we never show an artist that we don't both agree about. If we disagree on that, then that artist is not not shown. Um, we've made mistakes, but we make mistakes together. So there's no going. Oh well, I told you not to do that. <laughs> so we. We, we generally, everything you see here, we both feel passionately about because I couldn't sell something that I didn't believe in, even if he believed in it. It would not be truthful for me to be able to talk about it. I wouldn't be able to sell it to somebody and support it the way that I do. This is hard work. The contemporary market, particularly in our niche, is the hardest work in this business. It's not glitz and glam. It's not the top end of the market. We wa- we work very hard for these artists, and these are not all young artists. But I mean, some of these artists are in their 60s, and they've had long careers, and that's when it has to be tough for some of those artists, and we have to support them in every way we can with publications and working to get the museum shows and working, you know, to move them forward, because otherwise that group of people at that age range of between 50 and 65 stagnate in the marketplace. They are not the um, 80 year old masters, nor are they the newly minted MFA. Exactly, exactly. And when you, we talk a lot about these young artists, and when you pick them up, you, you don't know what's going to happen. They could wake up and become a ballet dancer in 10 years and or decide they're going to be a sculptor instead of a painter. And you walk through that process with them, but you lose those artists from your roster because they go in a different direction. I mean, other than Gregory Gillespie, who was with this gallery his entire career from the day it started to the day he died, you can't say that about everybody. You know, artists are taken, become famous and taken by bigger galleries that have locations all over the world. You hear about that in the art community all the time. But the gallery that starts with them in the beginning and gets them to that plateau it is the one that does the hardest work. That's very true. Thank you very much for Thank being you. with us. I hope you have a great expo. I hope so too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay.